What I found out is this. The voice of God is a very important subject to learn. Why? This is the problem with the conditioning going on today. That what we want is what God must want for us. And that's the reason why we don't hear the voice of God. And the Holy Spirit works using our faculties to communicate God's will to us. If you don't recognize your orientation, you will not recognize the limit of your orientation. God becomes the tool you use to accomplish it. Not God becomes the Lord that you follow Him to know His will. If you just live by the word, you won't have much to miss. The first thought that came to my mind in talking about the voice of God is to challenge people that don't build a one-sided relationship with God, build an all-round relationship with God. What does that mean? A lot of us have the notion that, you know, I just concluded the church and the kingdom. How I many of you remember that? Okay. A lot of us have the notion that our spiritual life has to do with church, our careers have to do with our office, our family life has to do with our home, and then we have our personal life. Because of that, we categorize our lives in such a way that we give God attention in our spiritual life, but we don't give him attention in our family life. We don't give him attention in our career, so our lives are compartmentalized. Is it true? Now, if you do that, you're going to run into confusion when it comes to hearing the voice of God. Why? Because God did not compartmentalize your life. You did. And so he wants to speak, but you only want to hear a particular thing. And what do you want to hear? Shall I tell you what you like to hear? If you have been de deprived of love and you are a needy person, like an average woman would be, that's not to be the derogatory of women. Men can be needy too. All you want to hear is how much God loves you. If I'm in the house, say amen. amen. If you have been abused and all you know is that nobody cares for you, all you want to hear is God loves me. So you tune your ears to the frequency of God loves me, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. Any other thing that God says will not register. All you want is. So what is driving your hearing is a need, not just God himself. I mean, if you can relate to that. That's why the next thought that came to my mind is recognize your orientation, both spiritual and natural. I grew up in a home where, I said it to you before, if you were sleeping when lunch was served, it was assumed that you were full. That's why you slept. Because hungry people don't sleep. <laughs> and because of that orientation, my father was somebody you got instructions from and corrections. So when I got saved, I transferred that to my father God. And all I can receive is instruction and what so if you tell me god loves you god loves you he falls on me like a duck water on a duck's back just give me instruction and that's my orientation your own is different true or false now these are thoughts and if you don't recognize your orientation you will not recognize the limit of your orientation so when god wants to say other things to you you close up your mind is somebody hearing me? I said I'm sharing my thoughts with us. First of all, don't build, build an all-around relationship with God, not a fragmented one. Secondly, recognize your orientation, both spiritual and natural. Now, I have scriptures to back my orientation. Hebrews 12 says, Him whom the Lord loves, he chastises. I can relate to that. Some of you can't. True or false? How can you relate to love and chastisement? If somebody loves you, they will say how good you. But the scripture says him, the Lord loves, he smacks. <laughs> Chastisement to me means smacking. 
Chastisement in the Bible means correction. See, can you see what orientation is doing here? Now, my spiritual orientation also is that I, am, I was trained to act on the word, not trained to act prof on prophetic words. So I met a lot of people who said, I saw a vision and God told me to do that. And I'm thinking, really? Which scripture, which verse, which scripture, which verse? They don't have the scripture, they don't have the verse. They act on it, they get into some confusion and they come back and ask me, why did that not happen? I said, I don't know. Why? My orientation cannot relate with that. Am I making sense? Now, is there anything wrong with their orientation? No. All you need to do is recognize yours and know the limitations of it. That's all. And you know why God put us together in churches? Because he knows that there is no way any one person can have everything correctly. So everybody has something to contribute for the full picture to be comprehended. Am I making sense? But the problem is this. Instead of me being willing to accommodate another person's orientation and what God could be saying through that, I close my mind to that because I think my orientation is the right one. So once again, our humanity, our selfishness, limits us in our spiritual journey. Is somebody hearing me here? Second, next thought. Make sure that your internal disposition is that of submission and teachableness. So that you can discern the voice of God clearly. What I found out is this. The voice of God is a very important subject to learn. Why? Because I remember when I was sharing the last time with us, I talked about what's that word I used? How that we have been reprogrammed. What's that word? I used one word. Conditioning. Thank you, sir. We are being conditioned by the circumstances of our lives. How many of you relate to that? We are being conditioned, whether we like it or not. Now, what happens is the conditioning has gotten to a point now where we no longer go to God for his will to be revealed to us. We decide what we want to do and ask God to make it happen. How many of you can relate to that? In other words, we become our own gods. This is where the self-development or personal development uh, uh, school and industry needs to be regulated with the wisdom of God if you are a Christian and you are involved with that. Because what they tell you to do is that you set a goal, what you want to become in life, so you decide. <laughs> so, God becomes the tool you use to accomplish it. Not God becomes the Lord that you follow him to know his will. Am I making sense? And because of that, more confusion sets in. Let me take you an example. Assuming I believe by my orientation and by my disposition, I believe that God loves me and he wants me to be comfortable. Then I come to Harvest Time Church and all they tell me is how to be committed, how to be committed, how to be committed. I would say that's not a church for me. Talk to me. Because A, my orientation is convenience. B, my orientation is God loves me. And C, I idolize my convenience. So I wouldn't like anybody to make me feel uncomfortable by telling me I'm not committed. I'm not winning souls Saturday. What? God loves me whether I win souls or not. Is that not true? Yes, but God loves me. Whether I come for men's prayer meeting, God loves me. Whether I come for any meeting, God loves me. Whether I'm not even in church, God loves me. Talk to me now. So by virtue of my orientation, I will hear a voice that says, move on. And I will say, God has spoken. Welcome. We are in for a journey. Say loud, amen. amen. Because these are the things that hinder. Because I've met so many people. Listen, I've been born again since 1979. Started full-time ministry since 1987. And I've met quite a number. And a lot of people have come and said, God told me this. And I'm thinking, where did he tell you that? And they are so convinced that God said that to them. I've met others who are prophetic. And they use their prophetic gift to manipulate others. And I'm thinking, 
God, I'm confused here. What's going on? And everybody's claiming to hear the voice of God. The voice of God. And I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, that whoever you gave your voice to is responsible for what they heard, not me. <laughs> because a lot of confusion. Some people don't know how to discern the voice of God. They don't know what to do. And because we here, we learn why do we teach the word more often than anything else in this church? Because that's our orientation. Say amen. We might as well have been prophesying over you. You will have a wife tomorrow. You have a husband tomorrow. You know, you, know, you have one million tomorrow. You know, I, you, know, you know, we can do a few things that the church will be fuller than this. But we choose to do what the Bible says. <laughs> and even then, listen, even when we choose to do what the Bible says, we only do what we have our limited understanding of the Bible to do. Can you see what I'm saying here? That's why we need to be open, honest, sincere with ourselves. Because you see, my culture, my orientation, everything has tailored me in a particular way. And anything contrary to that is wrong. No. No. Anything contrary to that may not settle with me. It doesn't make it wrong. But if I'm humble enough, I can open and learn from that. And it will add quality to what I know. But on the other hand... If I am so open and God has brought me to a local church like this and they're trying to build the word in me and I'm thinking, no, I need a prophetic word. No, I need a miracle here. No, I need this. No, I need that. No, I, I will not even concentrate on what they're doing here. So even what God brought me to accomplish here is not accomplished. And what I'm looking for there is not going to be accomplished. What I'm looking, so I've become a confused person, stay in church day and night and never receive anything. So not touch your neighbor and say, does this relate to you? <laughs> say loud amen <laughs> now you can see why a lot of <laughs> my wife was sharing a joke with me when we were young in the Lord in the campus is where we got saved you don't choose a wife by virtue of eyes you don't say wow I love that girl man she's beautiful you don't say that as a spiritual person Hello? You don't say that. You go pray and receive from the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And say, sister, the Lord told me you are my wife. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. That's where we were trained. It's good to laugh at it. <laughs> the Lord told me I had a dream and I saw you. I wish you were not laughing. <laughs> this is a very serious thing, man. Anyway, and as we grew up, we had sisters say, the Lord who told you will have to tell me to. <laughs> and gradually, conditioning happened and we left all of that behind. But they had a point. You see what I'm saying here? They had a point. They allowed God to lead them to the person they will marry because they didn't know what the future held. Only God knows the future. Amen. Can you see what we trade? And of course, when I was to get married to my wife, I didn't say, the Lord told me. I just saw you in a vision. But I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did. I combined what they had and what I know. That's why I call myself new school. They are old school. When I saw the organic attraction, Tell <laughs> you. When I saw the organic attraction, I didn't go the next moment and say, I took the organic attraction to God in prayers. I said, Lord, I'm feeling like this towards this. And Lord, I know my own tendencies. Is she the one or another? Can you see the balance? I didn't say, thus says the Lord, thou art my wife. But at the same time, I did not ignore the place of allowing the Lord to lead me. You see, that's why I combine old school and new school. <laughs> Although I stay more in the new school. But the point I'm making is this. Know that your internal disposition is that of soul. In other words, if I went to God and God said, mm -mm, 
Yes, there's an attraction. And God said, "Mm mm-mm. There was a case of a brother like that, one of these brothers who had gone ahead of us. And when, you know, he was sharing with us his own testimony, how he got to know who he was to marry, he said he was attracted to another sister. But every time he went to God in prayer, God would say, you have the freedom to marry her, but you will be under a lot of stress if you marry her. Can you see the place of the leading? You see, you will be under a lot of stress. So God was not forcing him against his will, but God was leading him to a greener pasture. I used to want, and of course he had to have an attraction for that one as well, but he did not let his attraction be the final. This is the problem with the conditioning going on today, that what we want is what God must want for us. And that's the reason why we don't hear the voice of God. Or rather, we make ourselves hear a voice that is according to the idol in our hearts. The point I'm making is this, that whenever I think about this subject, I look at so many confused minds when it comes to the voice of God. And you know what? You've come to the right place because if you just live by the word, you won't have much to miss. Amen. You won't have much to miss. Because when you think about voice, can there be a voice without the word? Ah, voice. Ah, voice. That makes no sense. It is when the voice conveys the word, then it makes sense. Is that not true? So it's the word that is conveyed that is the content that that voice is communicating. So it is the word that is still the issue. Say amen. So we need to develop a relationship with God based on his word, but more personal between us and him as we hear his voice. Say amen. I'm still sharing my thoughts with you. Are you enjoying my thoughts? So you must get rid of idols in your heart if you really want to hear the voice of God. In other words, even when there's an attraction, I remember my wife said that, that when she saw that there was an attraction going, she said, God, if he is not your will for me, I'm ready to let him go. What, is that in Christianity again today? Then the final thought before I start the message <laughs> is that the Holy Spirit is God's instrument to speak to us. Say loud amen. You see, and the Holy Spirit works using our faculties to communicate God's will to us. Now this is where the confusion comes in again. The Holy Spirit wants to use your faculties. If he says, my daughter, my daughter, you know what you will hear? Thunder. <laughs> So he cannot communicate from the sky. He has to come into you, say amen, and communicate to you through your faculties, internal faculties. Now, don't get me wrong. You see, anytime you hear any of our old-time testimonies and you feel in your heart that you must have made millions of mistakes, don't go into condemnation. Say amen. Understand that understanding might come to you so that your future can be better than your past. Am I making sense? You know, if somebody hears now that they didn't hear from God before they got married, so, you know, they should go and get a divorce. No, that's not what I said. (laughs) All I'm saying is that understand the 21st century Christianity, that they don't hear from God before they do things. And anything you're now going to do from now, if it's major, try to take time out to hear from God. And the only way you can hear from God is to neutralize and be ready to take a no for what your own agenda is. That's when you can hear from God clearly. But you see, we all have been trained to say, God, is it A or B? And so God is forced to choose either A or B. If God wants to say it is D, we're not there. (laughs) So we give God the choice. No, he is Lord, and you are to be free to hear from him so that he can tell you what to do. So the moment you identify your own idol, slaughter it. Say amen. You see, if I see my idol to be convenience, I will make myself work so hard. It's practical. If your idol is laziness, get on your tippy toes and work harder. If your idol is fear, then do something to counteract that fear. Say amen. You see, I don't understand the Christianity 
that sits down, does nothing, waits for one voice, and when the voice comes, speaks, whatever the voice is, leads to more confusion. How would you attract anybody to the kingdom of God with that kind of lifestyle? As I was waking up today, you are supposed to be at work at nine, right? When I began to pray in the morning, the Holy Ghost just arrested me. <laughs> and I left home at about 10 o'clock. I understand that you like God, but you, you know what I'm saying? But this is the confusion. And if, the reason why, especially in this country, the reason why many people don't want to come to Christ is that they have too many stories of confused people. Confused.com. It's called church. Confused.com is equal to church. Because a lot of people are confused. Am I right? I mean, they say, okay, God is in charge of everything. Then earthquake breaks out in Japan. Why is God allowing earthquake? I don't know. The world will end on the 21st of May. <laughs> um, I want to review my calculation. <laughs> and people had billboards and placards and t-shirts. The world is going to end. That's why we are confused. It's called confused. Is equal to... You know why? The Bible clearly states that the hour and the time knoweth no man except God. But the seasons we know. Now why is that man trying to prove a point? He wants to get some significance. All his life nobody has given him significance. So now it's time to... <laughs> anyway, I hope you are enjoying something here. We need to get acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Say loud, amen. amen. Now let's get into the Word of God and get some scriptures that will help us. Let's start with Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to be in a hurry because I know many people have been confused and there are some good materials out there that can help us. Say amen. amen. Very good materials out there. You know, and we, we, at the end of the day, probably recommend some. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 3. Are you there? 1 Kings chapter 3. This is talking about Solomon. Solomon in his wisest moments, in the wisest time of his life. How I many of you know Solomon started out right but ended up bad? Well, there's a lesson for You know what? I love God. He doesn't keep bad news and bad stories so that you think everything is hunky-dory. He puts it there so you know that <laughs> you can have a very... I mean, how better can you have a foundation to be born in the house of David? Wow. To be made a king with so much wealth. Even when he started, you know this guy prayed for the right things. Look at verse 9. It says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life. I mean, if you know, that's what you and I will ask. See what you and I will ask. Long life, riches, a cruise, a holiday for a lifetime, enough money to go on a cruise. Come on now. How many of you know if God appeared to you tonight and said, Tell me what you want me to do for you? My God. What would you think about? A cruise, a lifetime cruise, enough money in my account. My God, let me never die in the hands of armed robbers. <laughs> you should say, you will count all those things. Why? God Almighty, there's nothing he can't give you. And for the ladies to be a good husband, come on now, let him be loaded. Let him have enough. <laughs> Let him be able to sponsor our holidays anytime, any day. A fine car with a house or houses to match. Wealth in all the nations of the earth. You know what I'm saying? How many of you are saying amen to that? <laughs> but this man, in his wisest time of his life, asked for something that is so important. A heart, an understanding heart to judge his, God's people, that I may discern between good and bad. Now that word discern is what caught my attention. In the Hebrew, it's shama. It means to hear and obey. 
the ability to hear and obey. A wise man still asked for the heart to hear and obey God. Now that's, that's what caught my heart when I read that. Because this man in the peak of his excellence in his relationship with God, in the peak of his privilege, still understood that if he can have a heart to discern between good and bad, then he will be doing the will of God. And the Bible says in the next verse, the speech pleased the Lord. And God now added everything he never asked for, free of charge. Say amen. amen. That means that there's something about God that he likes for us to come into that position where we can discern his voice. But you see, he will not waste his voice if we're not willing to hear and obey. If all we want is for him to say what we want, we wouldn't discern between good and evil. If you look at what's going on around the world today, there's so much evil because these issues, and I can only learn them because somebody else has made a mess of some of them. Because I used to ask myself, if I hear that something went wrong with somebody, I'm not going to jump on the judgmental seat and say, he was not serious, he was not a Christian, or he, you know, he allowed, no, no, I'm going to ask God, why did that happen to that person? I like to know. And some of the times when I hear some things, I'm thinking, my God, help me so that won't happen to me. <laughs> Say loud amen. Because there is a lot of deception. You know your flesh can deceive you. Your humanity can deceive you. There's something about God that he likes for us to come into that position where we can discern his voice. But, you see, he will not waste his voice if we're not willing to hear and obey. When God is pleased with you, he will give you beyond your wildest dreams. Don't seek what you want. Seek what he wants. But, you see, we teach faith to learn how to get things. The ultimate purpose of faith is to please God. God rewards obedience to his voice. We do what is convenient for us and say, God loves me. No, do what is what? right in his sight.